WBEN HD2, Burlington, Philadelphia. The following programming is sponsored by Tom Tool III. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low-down payment options. For your free pre-approval, Call us at 610 My fault. One, two, commercial. Here comes the row open. MyMortgageAmerica.com. Mortgage America is equal to MLS 128501. Good afternoon, greater Philadelphia area. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacey Mitchell. Nick Wolf behind the camera as usual. And We've got some pretty cool topics to talk about today, uh, specifically, you know, what's going on with the foreclosure ban, the eviction bans that just came uh, came off the books back at the end of July, as well as some great advice from Gary Vanerchuk. If you don't know who he is, we'll break that down in the second segment. And we've got Kyle Sutera from Mortgage America coming on for the final segment to bring us up to speed on what's happening in the mortgage world. Stacy, we're going to get into the foreclosure an eviction ban here. For, before we get started, how's your week going? Tell us like what's happening in the day to day of a realtor. She did not expect this, so I'm putting her on the spot. Oh my gosh, uh, the week. Uh, well, it's starting anew, really, for me. Um, but because my weeks tend to be like Tuesday through Sunday night, so Monday I try to detox a little bit. <laughs> you know, smart. Uh, yeah, take a take a breath. Um, because it's always a frantic weekend. But yeah, the week in real estate this past week was uh, pretty amazing. Um, had a, got a couple buyers under contract that I had been working with. And there's nothing more exciting than when your buyers are so thrilled to death to be under contract to get their home. I mean, that just makes you feel like like all everything else, all the hard work, all that, you know, the, the drama and whatever happens in, in negative real estate land, it, it's it's all worth it when when people are so thrilled to death. Well, what you said there is, is really interesting because we know the market is really stressful. We know that this is not a process a lot of people want to go through. And it's a great unplanned segue into our first topic here because the, the big challenge a lot of these buyers have had is finding the right property, finding a home in general, getting their offers accepted because of the inventory crunch that we're seeing right now here in the greater Philadelphia area, Jersey, Delaware, you name it, it's happening. Like th this mm -hmm. has been the talking point besides the COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. for the past, um, uh, you know, at least 18 months at, at, at this stage and, and probably even a bit longer because before the pandemic, we still saw lower inventory levels, just not as low as this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that, if you got a question for the show, again, we're at info at tooltimeradio.com. Uh, we want to talk about the recent bans and the recent COVID legislation that is now pulled back finally after a bunch of extensions from right. the government and the CDC, the eviction and foreclosure bans ended on July 31st. And there mm -hmm. was an effort to extend them that did not go through. I mean, there was a lot right. of pushback on that. So, you know, uh, after three extensions, um, there's a lot of U.S. citizens that are out there right now that are, are worried about or that they could potentially be losing their home because of the CARES Act eviction and foreclosure protections that ended on Saturday. And despite the last ditch effort, here we are. Mm -hmm. So now people can be evicted again if they're not paying their rent. Mm -hmm. If you're not paying your mortgage, the foreclosure process can start. Mm -hmm. So I'm clear we want to probably segment this a little bit and, and talk about mm -hmm. what it actually means because these headlines, they tend to grab a lot of people's attention. Mm -hmm. you know, the reality is people aren't going to be out on the streets today or yesterday or even on Sunday, there, there, there's some more time that goes on here. So mm -hmm. do you want to hit on the eviction ban first and then we, we can get into the foreclosure ban? Sure. All right. So what people need to understand with the eviction, um, it's like you said, it's a process. It's not like one day they're out on the street if they haven't paid their rent. Um, th there is a process to go through uh, eviction. If you're a tenant that hasn't paid, I would highly recommend uh, looking to your local um, housing uh, authority, there are so many programs that have been flush with this, the COVID uh, 
acts, the care acts, uh, money that they're helping tenants uh, be able to stay in their homes or mm-hmm. yeah, whatever they're renting. So I, I highly recommend people to utilize those programs because they're out there and they're real and and mm-hmm. they do work. Um, and if you are work with your landlord, you know, reach out. Conversation's always good. You said something really interesting there. Working with the landlord. I don't know many landlords that drew a hard line when this happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. I was in that spot. I mean, we, you know, I'm a landlord, and we, and we had folks that said, "Hey, you know, we're, we're maybe having some trouble, or what's going on," and we were immediately ready to work with them because of what was happening. Right. Especially knowing that you know a lot of tenants tend to be in those jobs that really got hit hard by the right. pandemic, the service industry in particular. So. Uh, I, I think that that's great advice for the tenants. And and obviously, the, you know, the big question we want to talk about is like the the resale market. Like, what, mm-hmm. what does that mean? So mm-hmm. what I know is, is is this, that even if the well, we know that yeah, that the ban is lifted just because the ban got lifted doesn't mean you're getting evicted this week. Doesn't mean right. you're out on the street because the court systems are so backed up right, right. now. I mean, they are so backed up on cases from 2019 that were on the books because the court systems move really slow in general. So even if you go as far as, okay, we're going to file for eviction, a landlord does that. And then the tenant has to show up and there's a case. I don't see this happening for another 30, 60, 90 days at a minimum, right? Um, especially here in Pennsylvania, other states, something to be aware of is that the, the, the rental law has had some loopholes, you know, big surprise, people find loopholes and they, had the ability to process the eviction, but just not actually physically remove the people from the property. So that's not happening here in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Other states, you know, I, I would encourage you to get, you know, get in touch with a local expert or have us connect you with somebody if you're listening, because I, I don't know the answers there. The courts here are, are, are severely backlogged right now. So even if you're a tenant and you're in this situation or you're a landlord and you're ready to get somebody out of, out of the house, it's not happening anytime soon. I mean, you're, right. I, I would imagine, and and in general, let's mm-hmm. say there wasn't a pandemic, it's still hard to get people out of these Absolutely. properties. Yeah, it doesn't happen that. overnight. You yeah. got to have a few months of non-payment, and then the court order gets filed, and then you know there, there's motions, and the legal system is not a speedy one. So th- this can be very misleading there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I don't I don't think we're going to see a lot of people on the streets. So I guess the question I have is, you know, what does this mean for for the market? So we're talking about buyers and sellers. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you see happening here to the landlords and to you know potential buyers? Is this going to affect them at all? Uh, well, for I don't think that it's going to create a whole flood of uh, foreclosed properties on the market. That's for sure. Um, so I think for buyers, if you're in a situation, well, let's just say for homeowners, if you're in a situation where you haven't paid your mortgage, definitely look to refinance at this point um, because I think there's a lot of opportunity to get that process started. And also, mortgage companies are willing to work with landlords. If you're a small, let's say a small business landlord, mm-hmm. not you know a landlord, a mega landlord. Yeah, like five, company, 10, 15 exactly, properties. Yeah, right. And you've been hurt and you haven't been able to pay your mortgage payments because your tenants aren't paying. It is, it, it's a domino effect when this kind of thing happens. Um, I would definitely consider uh, reaching out to the mortgage companies, if you haven't already, mm-hmm. uh, to reconfigure your, your mortgage, to um, you know get a new loan. They'll work with you. It's not going to create this uh, flood of foreclosed homes on the market, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I agree totally there. And we're going to get into the foreclosure ban in a second. An mm-hmm. important point here, here, here's my prediction mm-hmm. of what happens with these these eviction bans. There will be some landlords out there that say, you know what, I'm done with this. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go through this again. The market's peaking right now. I'm going to cash out. Mm-hmm. There's a couple reasons for that. So I do anticipate once some of these evictions get processed, we're going to see properties come on the market that are going to be in that first time buyer trade up segment because there's not a lot of landlords that own premium properties because mm-hmm. they don't, they don't cash flow and they're not, they're, they're not going to be that investment type of property to begin with. There will be landlords that say, you know what, I'm out because I'm worried that 1031 exchanges might be eliminated. True. Capital gains tax is being pushed on going up from the Biden administration. So I am clear that we're going to start to see some of this, th- this is probably going to have a bigger impact than the foreclosure ban because we already have seen landlords mm-hmm. want to liquidate. Yeah. A smart true. landlord gets their money to perform for them. And then when the appreciation right, they sell and then they, they, they do really well. That's a wealth building strategy, which everyone should be thinking about this in the real estate industry right now. 
um, we just did an exercise about visioning and, and that sort of stuff at our team earlier today. And I'm clear that's something that every real estate agent should be thinking about because they get opportunities at these things. I anticipate this will help the inventory crisis more. Not a whole lot. I don't, I don't know that it's going to be a, a big bump, but the first time buyer segments and those trade up segments, they're the ones that are the most competitive right now. That's, mm-hmm. that's where, the, where people are having the toughest time finding properties because there's so many millennial home buyers coming to the market. So right. I see the foreclosure ban mm-hmm. having a much bigger impact on the inventory challenge, or excuse me, the eviction, the eviction ban, ban. Okay. having a much bigger impact on the inventory issue that we're having than the foreclosure ban because landlords are just going to cash out. You know, yeah. think about the person that's been renting their property out for 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. They're probably getting ready to retire. They're moving assets around. Mm-hmm. So that to me is really, really critical. And that's what I'd be keeping my eye on. Mm-hmm. And if you're a smart real estate agent and you got someone looking in these segments, I'd be looking at non-owner occupied properties Mm -hmm. and going directly to the seller before they get to the market. That to me is going to be a number one option here because these people are going to want to sell for the right reasons Mm -hmm. and the timing. And they just might have gone through a hassle of not getting any rent for 12 months. I mean, who, who knows? So and any other any other feedback on the eviction ban, Stacey, before we get into the foreclosure no, ban? No, I, I agree with that 100%. Uh, we've already experienced a couple of uh, investor um, sellers that are cashing out because mm-hmm. of the potential 1031 exchange going away, capital gains, and other reasons. So, uh, yeah, you're right about that. They A few of them are, are done with the market, and uh, they're just going to take their... Uh, take their assets and, and uh, cash out and go on their merry retirement yeah. way. Go to the beach or something, right? <laughs> so, right. Somewhere more fun. Well, maybe get one of those last 1031 exchanges if those get eliminated yes. because that is the last man standing right now. So right. I, and I, and some of this, this legislation coming forward from the Biden administration, I'm clear is accelerating this because mm-hmm. you know, yes. I mean, with, you know, with, with, with capital gains tag, I mean, you look at just, okay, I sell now versus this year, I'm, I'm making less money. Mm-hmm. And how much money are they really making on the asset? I mean, that's a long-term play. So I'm glad we're on the same page. I think that's an important message, not only for buyers in those segments, but also for your realtor to start targeting those non-owner occupied properties. So let's talk about the foreclosure ban. Mm -hmm. Um, And because this this is a little different. So the uh, MBA Mortgage Bankers Association Chief Economist, Mike Fran, this guy's got a tough name to pronounce. Fran Tantoni said that homeowners uh, are on the rebound, and he gave some stats here that was really helpful, that mortgage forbearance dropped from a high of 8.5% in June of last year to 4.3% in June of this year. This this is good news. This wow. means people are able, I mean, you're talking yep. about almost half, people are able to afford the mortgages they have right now. So I think mm-hmm. overall, you, you don't want to see people default. That's not good for the economy. It's not good for anybody. So that's really good news. So what does the foreclosure ban mean for the market? I mean, there's this story of, or the, I, I would say narrative, because it's not a story. There's no facts. We're going to see a ton of foreclosures. Yeah. What do you think I've, about this, Stace? Yeah. I've heard that a lot for the past, probably, I don't know, four or six months. There's buyers waiting out there, you know, anxiously awaiting for all these foreclosures to hit the market so that they can jump in. But um, I never thought that that was going to happen anyway. Mm-hmm. I figured it was a temporary thing. People would eventually uh, make up and um, catch up on their mortgage payments or the financial financial institutions, the banks, the lenders would definitely reconfigure those loans. So I think that's more what's going to happen. And uh, you're not going to see as many foreclosed properties as people would have thought. Totally agree with you. And, and I'll give you some, some data to back this up. One is, and, and a lot of people don't realize this, right now there's 2.1 million people in forbearance, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association, and any federal-backed loan is eligible for up to 18 months of forbearance. So at the end of June, that's the 15-month point. So now we're in, I guess this is month 16, so we're in month 17 now. Uh, but if you ha- you can get that extra three-month extension, so that gets you to September. So if folks are reaching out to their servicer and saying, I need more time before the 31st, they're going to have a little extra time there. So that, 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 that's one point. And then secondly, I mean, unemployment reports are pretty optimistic. Um, and we've seen that hiring is picked up. And on, on top of that, and this is the big thing, and we talked about this with David Childers a couple of weeks ago from Keeping Current Matters, that only about two thirds of the homes in the U.S. are actually financed right now. It's 65%. Mm-hmm. And the equity surge we saw at the beginning of the year was like 19.6%. It would, that, that, that was uh, according to 
a lot of the the reports that we saw out there from the NBA, from National Association of Realtors, from people like Better.com. So, and the average homeowner had 10 plus percent equity in their home. So you can afford to sell right, and right. not have a deficiency judgment filed against you and not have to go through that foreclosure process. So the folks that are in trouble, the best thing to do is call an agent and see what you can get, because maybe this is your chance to get out of a home that you maybe can't afford anymore because things changed, or you don't want to be, have that big mortgage balance anymore. You can get that off your personal ledger sheet. So for those couple of reasons, we're seeing this drop. There's the ability to sell, even if a lot of distress, I mean, if you take the 2.1 million homes, mm -hmm. that that's not going to do anything for inventory right now. Right, right, right. But it's good that, um, that these folks do have options and the more options you have, the better it is. So, um, I, I totally agree that there's probably equity to be had in these homes. Um, so if you don't want to make up, you know, for those back mortgage payments, then definitely consider selling. Well, and I, I think you hit it right on is that it's good to have options, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, if you have two or three options, then you can decide what's going to be best right. for you. So that, right. that's important for anybody. Um, Lawrence June, the NAR chief economist said that the, uh, he, he sees no negative impact on the economy from this. Um, and he's quoted as saying with the nation's severe housing shortage persisting mm -hmm. properties listed will not linger in the marketplace mm -mm. and available inventory will continue to be, to be fought over by both potential homeowners and investors. And he continued in his statement that there will be some increase in foreclosures, and given the exceptionally strong demand for housing in America today, listed properties will not linger in the marketplace, meaning there will be no downward pressure on home prices. Mm -hmm. So knowing that you've had buyers saying, I'm waiting for this, knowing that you know some sellers are a little nervous about this, you got a potential buyer. What are you telling them right now if they say, I'm going to wait for the foreclosure wave to hit? I tell them that there is not going to be a foreclosure <laughs> wave that's going to hit. <laughs> so, And I explain to them why. Um, because there is a lot of chatter out there and most of it is incorrect. Uh, so when I, I talk to them and explain to them the situation and why the inventory is low and what's been happening in the market, uh, they understand and they realize. Mm -hmm. So at that point, they have a choice. Um, do you still want to pursue and, and jump into the housing market at this great time where the interest rates are low and you can get more house for your money? Um, or are you going to still continue to sit on the sidelines and potentially, um, you know, have to, if you wait until next year, get into less of a house for more money if the interest rates tick up. She said it perfectly. So, and, and this is, this is the big objection we get is I'm going to wait for the market to calm down. I'm going to wait for the market to do X, Y, or Z. Right. And we're going to say this again, because it's so critical. This is the time where you need to get a professional and understand what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to what your friend told you. Don't listen to what your neighbor told you. Because people like to talk like they got these deals in real estate and the only deal mm -hmm. right now is getting the house Correct. and being able to find a home that's going to work for you and your family. Right. And what we know is that inventory is still less than two months in the suburbs, still less than three months in Philadelphia and, and suburban market. We're talking about Montgomery, Chester, Delaware counties. So in order for it to be a balanced market where buyers have more leverage or equal leverage, it's a six month supply. So we're not even close here. And that's why we're going to continue to see prices appreciate. And that's why we're going to continue to see this be a challenge. Now, the good news is that it, it's not as frenzied anymore. We're not seeing, hey, I'm going to waive everything and I'll give you two times, double the sale price and we can close tomorrow and here's a bag of money. I mean, that, that that's not happening <laughs> anymore. So there is the ability for the buyers that wanted to wait. Mm -hmm. I'd be out there looking now instead totally. of waiting until the fall when everyone else is going to get back into the market. And for the sellers that want to sell before the end of the year, I'd be looking to get the home on the market now and being a little patient rather than waiting for the influx of inventory that we always see in the fall because we're seeing a seasonal market now. Despite all this news, it's not going to have an immediate impact. I mean, that, that's what's clear to me. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. If you are buyers, I think right now is a great time to be out there. I've noticed in our local market, there is so much opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um it seems like there's a little less traffic as far as uh, the houses. And instead of being gone in two days, they, they're they still on the market like seven days. Mm -hmm. There are the opportunities that I look for for my buyers. And uh, they have, instead of, you know, five hours to think about an offer, they'll have 24 hours to think about an offer. So there's definitely opportunity right now. Um, but 
I agree with you. I think in the fall, when people are coming back from vacations and school is going to be back in session, um, it's going to be, it, it's going to start. The frenzy could start again. And uh, I think that's where we're going to go in the fall. And we'll talk a little bit about this in our final segment here when, when Kyle Zutera comes on from Mortgage America, because we want to look at what rates are going to do, how that all is, is, is tracking and projecting. Mm-hmm. And you know, more, more than anything else, what, what we know is that the best time to be out there buying is when nobody else is. Correct. And the best time to have your home on the market is when there's very little competition. So that goes for buyers and for sellers. This is what Warren Buffett tells people. You don't want to be the one buying when everyone else is. You want to be the one buying when a lot of people aren't. So that's where we're going to leave it on this segment. Coming up next, we got some amazing words of wisdom from mega entrepreneur, social media star, whatever you want to call him, Gary Vaynerchuk. And then we got Kyle Sutera, hopefully chiming in on this segment as well. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. The real estate market is red hot. Have you considered taking advantage? Call the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax at 610-692-6976 or visit our website, tomtool.com to connect and take advantage of these market conditions. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low-down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit tomtool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. Buying a home or already own one? We can you hear fine? Can you hear good? Alliances Insurance Agent. Uh, cool. If you haven't reviewed your policies in the last three years, now's the time. New home buyers, there are a number of ways that we can help you get to that settlement table. Call us to find out more at 610. 610- 10 seconds, coming back. 0043, extension 3, or visit our website, alliancesinsurance.com. Don't forget the S. Stand by. For savings. What is up, Delaware Valley? We are back on Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB, 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacy Mitchell. And we've got special guest, lender extraordinaire, probably the best lending company I've worked with in 20 years. And that is not to make Kyle feel good. I don't need to do that. Um, it, uh, Kyle Sutera with Mortgage America. Kyle, thanks for coming on, my man. Thanks for having me. So he's going to chime in on our next topic here and then give us a breakdown of what's going to happen the rest of the year with mortgage rates, predictions, financing, all that good stuff. So what we want to talk about is um, we had a, if you guys don't know this, we, we do something every morning. It's called a, it's a 5 a.m. call. The website's 5amcall.com. It's a motivational call. It's got about 2,000 real estate agents that jump on every morning. Um, it gets replayed in a podcast, so you can subscribe to it uh, with the content. It's a five-minute motivational call. And we had Gary Vanerchuk and his sister, Liz Novello, who's a real estate agent up in New Jersey, on for the entire week last week. And this took us three years to book. So this is something I found it with a couple other uh, real estate agents up and down the East Coast. And it was more just an accountability of getting up and working and having a routine. So if you don't know who Gary Vanerchuk is, you guys know who he is, right? Yes. Okay. So Gary Vanerchuk, he owns a company called Vanner Media. It's in New York. He's, uh, if you Google him, he's the chairman of Vanner X. He's a you know, he, heavy social media star. Um, he took his father's liquor store in New Jersey and turned it into a uh, eight-figure business by doing wine reviews on YouTube. This was like very cutting edge. This is back in like, I think like 2007, 2000. I don't even know. Um, and, and the point is, so he, he understands social media and understands how to work his way up. And he's also, you know, he's not even from here. So, I mean, he's, uh, he immigrated here when he was a kid. And he came on the call and he had some really good advice for real estate agents. So, and I think this goes for the mortgage companies uh, that are out there, mortgage brokers, anyone that's in business for themselves or is in sales. I loved what he had to say here. So I'm going to break this down. I just want to kind of hear what you guys think about this because it was about 20 minutes of content. And again, we, we, it took us three years to even get him on the call. He committed to it in 2018 at a, at a um, what's the right word? A seminar that he did, not a seminar, but an event he did called Agent 2021 at Miami Dolphin Stadium. 
So what he opened with, and I'm going to toss it to you too, is that the thing about real estate, and again, this goes for mortgages and everybody else, is that you are in it all the time. I mean, you're grinding constantly. And when you're in sales and you're in the human behavior business, which I'm clear we all are, right? I mean, you know, people get emotional, they get worked up, it's stressful. There's a lot of disappointment there. And when, when we asked him what his morning routine was, this is what he said. I thought this was pretty wild. I'm just great. This is the only thing I do in my morning routine. It's the only thing he's consistent with. I am grateful that none, nobody I cared about died the day before. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about this, Stacey? I'll let, I'll let you lead off here. Well, I love that because that's what it comes down to. It's all uphill from there, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, you know, nothing else is really that important. Nobody died, you know, and he, that's his, that's his one thing that he's grateful for when he gets up and he checks his phone to make sure, you know, there wasn't 700 phone calls and mm-hmm. text messages and that nobody died. I love that. Um, the macro, um, because it, you know, to me, that's everything, everything else is secondary. You know? Yeah. I think you get very easily caught up in the day to day and everything that get, that this industry throws at you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Breaking it down to square one and mm-hmm. knowing that everyone that you love is around you still, that's yeah, it's a good place to start. Yeah. Well, and he did, you said something about the macro, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, sometimes people, they just get too rigid and, you know, there, there's folks who say, okay, at five o'clock, I do this. And at five oh five, I do this. And then at five ten, I eat the same breakfast every day, five days in a row. And there's nothing wrong with that. Gratitude should be part of everyone's day because, you know, th- there's so many bad things that can happen, right? Mm-hmm. Think about the worst day in all of our careers individually. Mm-hmm. There's probably 20 things that went wrong that day. At least, <laughs> at oh, least. Yeah. if not if more, not more. <laughs> if not more. And it doesn't really matter because those things can all be fixed. And I, I mean, I've said this to you, Stacey, that there's really no emergencies in real estate unless the house is burning down and I'm not a firefighter. I mean, it's like, what am I going to do? Go over there and get the hose going. So when, when it comes to gratitude, how do you guys work that into your day? Because I, I know you both got strong mindsets and, and obviously have a lot of success. H- how do you treat your gratitude on a daily basis? Because to me, if every agent and every mortgage person out there, because our jobs are, are basically the same, you, you have a different function in the transaction. It's mm-hmm. the same, sa- same, same job in terms of managing people through and guiding people through a really tough process. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. How do you work gratitude into your day? Is there anything you do to kind of remind yourself what you're doing this for and what, what's most important? Mm-hmm. Kyle, you can lead it off here, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Working gratitude into my day. Um, I mean, client interaction. For me, you know, it's all what we do is very service based. It all does come back to the client. It's it's hard to uh, or it's easy to lose sight of that sometimes. Um, so, you know, appreciating a good client, appreciating a good transaction, all the support staff that goes into getting it done. Really, you know, realizing the team you have around you is is good and what you what you're doing day to day is good um, can, you know, can help distract you or, or, you know, avoid diving into the negatives. How great is that when when the play works like it's drawn up, right? right? Like you get the call, <laughs> Stacy gets the call and she says, hey, talk to Kyle Zutera and then Kyle pre-approves and then they yeah. take all your advice and then they get the offer accepted. I mean, that is something to be grateful for because that doesn't happen very often. I think that the, the perfect transaction is a hard thing to manage in a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. What about you, Stace? It's funny because I related so much to what he said about his morning gratitude. Um, I have a evening gratitude when I... I'm into bed. My bed is so comfortable. I can't tell you like (laughs) my bed and I don't sleep well. And that's why my bed's so comfortable. It has to be, you know, I try to do things so I can get some 20,000 thread count sheets over here, (laughs) goose down pillows. So when I get in bed, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that my bed is so comfortable because I'm sure there's so many people out there and I think, you know, that don't even have a bed to sleep in. And then I go through my list. I am grateful that my family is so healthy and, and, you know, similar to him, like nobody died that day, but I do work that in. And there's other things that I'm grateful for too. When I can get up and do my exercise and I can go out and run, Mm -hmm. um, I'm always thinking in my, my mind, how grateful I am just to be out to move my legs that in that way. Um, but that's just my own personal thing because of my own personal experiences. So I, maybe that's what it comes down to. And he is so right about, um, just everything else is secondary because things can be fixed. You know, there's Mm -hmm. no Mm -hmm. true, true alarm that, you know, the sellers might be, you know, a little um, freaked out about a situation that is going on, but it can be fixed. You know, we've all been through that. 
Yeah, well, that, that's a great point because I think, you know, a lot of times we take things for granted that, I mean, you can go, go get up and exercise. There's people that can't do that. I mean, right. and they might be dying to, um, you know, grateful that have to have good people working around you because there's oh, been absolutely. a lot of cases when, you know, we don't get to, you know, work with the folks that we know are going to do a great job and we have to do it anyway. And it makes it like 10 times harder to do your job. So yeah. those are really great observations. And, I, you know, if you're not grateful for what you have, at least be grateful for what you don't have because that can make you better. Uh, but some people kind of forget that part and they're just focused on like the next sale, the next lead. Yeah. And what that does, and this was the next thing he talked about, is when you're grateful for what, something, have mm-hmm. some sort of gratitude, whatever that is, it takes the emotion out of real estate. Mm-hmm. Because so many of these agents out there, I mean, and, and he, he like went off on this on the call. <laughs> he did. That th- they get so emotional. And, you know, if, if you're actually grateful, instead of, getting ticked off at your competitor, getting ticked off at, you know, you lost a deal to Bank of America and then they won't close on time, or, or, <laughs> right? Or the, the agent that you know isn't going to call people back or doesn't know what they're doing, but they just happen to go with them because they had a connection. Instead of being snide or, mm-hmm. you know, talking behind that person's back, when you're actually grateful for something, it lets you be offensive in your business. And when you're offensive, um, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not worried about what the competition's doing. You're really just focusing on yourself. Right. Because... Real estate, I mean, there's always things that are going to go wrong. And ultimately, you got to learn how to take the loss. And then also, as long as you come out a couple points ahead, that's what really counts at the end of the day. I mean, you know, you see these like NBA games where it's like 158 to 148. Like, it's okay. Well, you know what? They played bad defense, but they still won. Mm-hmm. And so I, th- I thought that was that was pretty interesting. Um, so, so how do you guys kind of keep to that sort of offensive mentality, focusing on the things you can do to move the needle in your business? rather than all those outside forces that are trying to hold you back. Exactly that. I focus on what I can do to keep things moving along. I don't focus on, because all I know is I can control what I can control. I can't control other parties. So I do what I need to do to continue to keep the deal together. Um, And like you said, you know, be nice to other agents. Like (laughs) you have to work with these folks, you know, it, it comes full circle just be nice. Um, and people feed off of that too. I yeah, think that that's a contagious do. thing yep. and, and that can help everyone move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do in our industry or in any industry in sales as a whole. I mean, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the, in the tough details and the negatives. Um, but yeah, t- controlling the things that you can control, mm-hmm. trying to block out everything else and, uh, and leaning on the people that you have around you. And I think that, that lets everyone take a step forward. Well, and, and that's what actual gratitude is, because there's a lot of people out there that, that fake it, right? They're like, oh, I'm, I'm so thankful for you, Kyle. You're the best lender I've ever worked with in my life. And then behind their behind your back, they're like, right. oh, yeah. screw this guy. So They say that? I, I mean, I'm telling you what they say about me, yeah. so you can put my name in there. But I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you can see through that in a lot of cases. Uh, you can see through. When somebody- like almost immediately when there's not an actual gratitude there. And, you know, it, it's not being about grateful about you know, what it, it's what what's going on in your life and what you have going on, you know, like your mm-hmm. like your your family's healthy, right? I think that's right. a great thing that, that Gary points out here. And but it's gotta be real. It can't be that facade or that 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 fake nice that you get from mm-hmm. people. And mm-hmm. we've all been doing this enough to be able to sniff that out like right away. Instant. I mean yep. when when someone says like, Hey, how you doing today? Kyle, I'm having an amazing day. I'm just having super you know, and it's like, <laughs> okay, I don't know if this is real or not. And then yeah. You see them griping when they think no one's looking. I mean, right. that, that happens all the time. And right. so uh, the message I got here was be grateful and that's going to lead you to being offensive. And then when you're offensive, you can not worry about all these other threats that are coming out. Because then what he talked about was like the DOJ lawsuit or like Zillow, like mm-hmm. hiring real estate agents. And now there's Tomo, which is kind of the same thing as Zillow by the ex-president of Zillow doing the same thing, yep. um, which, you know, they're going to do their thing. And they could be successful companies, but we're not going to stop them. Like mm-hmm. you don't really stop winners. Winners win no matter what. And yes. you got to be grateful to do that. So how do you take that mindset? And Kyle, I'd love to hear from you on this because I think the mortgage industry is, is getting a taste of, unfortunately, what the real estate industry has been dealing with the past two, three years with these like this rock, rocket mortgage is another mm-hmm. one yeah. um, where they have these partnerships and they have agents that work with them. So yeah. How, how do you block that out and how do you focus on what's best for you and your company and, and your and your team? You just have to have confidence in what you do and, and the offering that you provide to your clients and to the people around you. Um, you know, yeah, there's there's plenty of larger banks that are coming in really heavy. Rocket Mortgage is, is probably number one. Um, we're never going to compete directly with them, right? And we don't have to because we offer a lot of things that they don't. We offer a much more personalized experience. 
um, we we offer the same rates, so we can go toe to toe with them on that, um, but actually be there with them at the closing table. So you know, you you don't focus on what they're doing well, but focus on what you do well. And again, I think people can feed off of that, and people will appreciate that at the end of the day. Everyone needs to write that down. Focus on what you do well, not what they do well. I mean that that that's it. That's it in a nutshell, man. That that's great. Like I mean. You can stop the camera. We can cut the show right here. <laughs> if if all the agents and mortgage brokers and anyone else in this business focus on that. I, I love that. Stace, what about you? Well, as Gary was pointing out, stop focusing on like the number one sales, real estate salesperson in your county and hating on them. Stop doing that. You know, focus on yourself. Focus on your own business. Um, you know, that that's a pretty um, very small saying that we learned when we were little kids. You know, mind your own business. <laughs> it's very simple. It's easy, but do that. You know, don't focus on others. Um, you know, focus on on yourself and grow, and growing your own business. Well, and th- think about all the emotion in real estate and what people really focus on. Like, oh, this person didn't get back to me in ten minutes, mm-hmm. or oh, th- this agent didn't. You know, I mean, you, you mentioned it. They kind of people get nasty with each other on 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 the calls. And I mean, one of the things we do is, you know, one of our values is being a team and being drama free and. You know, that, that goes a long way. And to, to your point, I mean, you're not going to stop the winners. You're going to stop the people that shouldn't be in the business in the first place. That's where the market share comes from. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that, that that's a really great point. And, you know, that, that's the kind of stuff you, if you're getting into the business or you're like new to any business, that's what you need to be focusing on. And, and that's how we train all our people. So if you're thinking about getting into real estate before we get into the tactical segment here, we do have a real estate scholarship program. It's uh, realestatescholarshipprogram.com. Check out the site. We've got some agents that are having tremendous success from going through there. And this is the kind of stuff that we teach at our team so you can block out all the noise because there sure is a ton of it in real estate. So you're not going to stop the winners. You can't really worry about these mega threats coming in from the outside, which, I mean, you know, we constantly talk about internally. Here's how we're going to beat them. And Gary didn't talk about this in the call, but he did the keynote at the Tom Ferry Virtual Summit uh, in, I guess it was August. I, I don't even remember all these virtual events anymore. It was last year. And he said the only way to beat big tech is through a strong local brand. And I think that's exactly what your company's doing. That's, what we're, that's the same thing we're doing here. So knowing that's the case, the last thing he said here, I thought this was really interesting. We got about two, three minutes, and we'll, we'll take a quick break, and then it's the Kyle Sutera show after this, um, is that uh, he had a, some tactical advice about Facebook groups. I found this to be really interesting. So before I get into that, I mean, I'd love to hear from both of you guys. Like, what's your experience with Facebook groups for now? And like, are you, are you involved in any? Are you part of them? What are they called? Tell us a little bit more about that. I I'm involved <laughs> with some Facebook groups. So what um, are they like? I mean, like is a it, lot of events. Okay, okay. Um, that's that's primarily what I've been using for. So events, okay. Any anything like local, like you know, um, you know, mainline, uh, you know, mainline parents group or anything like that? Or, or is your wife involved in any of those? I'm sure my wife's all okay. over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Main li- mainline I mean, moms, personally. right? <laughs> yeah. I'm in a couple of, um, I'm in the uh, Chester County real estate group and Delaware County real estate group. I okay. Think. But I love Gary's idea to create a Facebook group that's not focused on real estate. It's not real estate centered. Um, call it something like Chester County Ambitious Entrepreneurs Group or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that way, you know, start building onto that and it will eventually um, bear the fruit of real estate transactions. That's for sure. Well, and, and I think that that's the point though. You've got to give, it's got to be content-based marketing. That's his, his whole, his whole life is based on this where he just gives, gives, and he gives away all his best stuff for free. Like you go on his um, you know, it's his YouTube page or his Instagram. I mean, it's here's advice for entrepreneurs. Here's advice for this advice for that. And the thing about this, I found most interesting is that Facebook's kind of become like a secondary social network. You're seeing a lot of Instagram. People are talking about TikTok now, Mm -hmm. all these other things. Two years ago, not this past year, the year before Facebook had, uh, their whole commercial they did was based on groups. And it was like, you know, um, like, like snowboarding in Denver or, you know, people that are rock climbing in certain areas. So, common interests Mm -hmm. that unite the local community. And that allows you to really be like the mayor of your town. And what you're doing is you're really just like helping people and you're giving them advice because the stuff we're talking about here is no different than another entrepreneur could, could help with. I mean, you tell them, Hey, here's how I'm using my social media advertising. Well, guess what? Someone who owns a store or has a restaurant or has an insurance business or a mortgage business or whatever, they can utilize that to just build goodwill within the community. And 
the more you give, the more you get back. Um, and it's a way to really build that community. And what, what I found most interesting, and we just did an episode of uh, Agent Hacks earlier today that's going to drop tomorrow, Nick and I did about this, is that post about events, post about supporting other local businesses. Don't ever ask for the order, because if you do, then they know what you're there for. And just just give value, because people like you, and you, both Kyle and, and Stacy here, I know we're on the radio, so we got to explain who I'm pointing at. <laughs> um, like there, There's a lot of value that you have and just from talking to people, it's going to come out. And the more you give that, then it comes back to you. And it's going to attract the kind of clients that you want, not the people that are going to give you a hard time and bust your chops. It's going to be folks that, wow, I really value your opinion. What do I need to do? Because I'm not familiar with getting financing or buying a house or doing whatever. So, you know, I mean, there was a lot to unpack in that like 17 minute call. Uh, anything else you guys want to chat about here about Gary Vee before we take a quick break? No, I, I recommend everybody listen to that. Yes. Agreed. It's Great point. It's extremely valuable. So mm -hmm. if you go to 5amcall.com um, and you can get on the call, we have a live call six days a week, take off on Sundays, day of rest. Um, but if you, uh, or if you look for the uh, Spotify or um, it's on iTunes as well, there's a podcast. It's 5am call. You can get the whole thing. It was Sunday's episode is the whole thing unedited. Um, and that would be what Sunday, August 1st. So you can subscribe there. It's a great place to go. So on, on that note, we're going to take a quick break and then we're coming back. We're talking about mortgages, the rest of the year, the outlook for next year. Kyle's going to give us the full breakdown like he does every day to all our great clients and all the amazing people we get to work with. This is Tool Time Radio on WWDB 860 AM. Buying a home or already own one? We can help. I am Kevin Hamill from Alliances Insurance Agency. If you haven't reviewed your policies in the last three years, now's the time. New home buyers, there are a number of ways that we can help you get to that settlement table. Call us to find out more at 610-816-0043, extension 3, or visit our website, alliancesinsurance.com. Don't forget the S, it's for savings. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first time buyer programs and low down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. The real estate market is great. 15 seconds. Have you considered taking advantage? Call the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax at 610-692-6976 or visit our Say that again? tomtool.com. I thought you were saying something, Tom. My bad. Well, you're coming back on. Welcome back to Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacy Mitchell. And again, we work with the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Mainline, the number one Remax team since 2018. I don't know if we should be telling people that after the last segment because they're probably all hating on us. <laughs> uh, and we've got Kyle Sutera here from Mortgage America, uh, which I'm, I'm really excited to get into some, some great stuff here with Kyle because I think the, the big question we get besides how's the market is mm -hmm. like, what's going on with rates? <laughs> How do we time this? Yes. What's going to happen, especially this time of year? Because this has been a seasonal market, unlike last year, mm -hmm. where we're in that kind of August vacation lull. Kids are going back to school and not that homes aren't selling and people aren't, aren't buying. It's just it's a little slower than it was maybe two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So, Kyle, for someone that y you get and, and they come in and they say, hey, you know, should I wait now? Should I buy now? Because rates just came back and below 3%. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your prediction for rates? And what's just the average advice you're giving buyers at this point in time? And then we can get into some specifics. Yeah. Um, I Look, it's a very, very hard question. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of smart people that made a lot of big predictions uh, last year about 2021 rates, you know, increasing. And um, if you look at where rates are now, you would think that they're wrong. But if you actually look over the past six months, um, they, they weren't all that incorrect. You know, rates mm -hmm. did take a little bit of a steady rise as the economy got back on its feet a little bit. Um, and then surprise, surprise, you know, the, the economy, a little bit of unrest this past month. And now we're back below 3%. So for me, um, moving forward, it's going to have a lot to do with with the Delta variant and that impact on the economy, because 
um, you know, it, weakening economies or, or you know, the the expectation of a weakening economy can impact rates. You know, it that that could keep rates low to kind of balance things out. Um, but you know, the more jobs that come back, the more consumer spending that happens, um, that could cause rates to go back up. So I think that'll be a telltale sign. Um, there's there's no doubt we don't really see anything spiking. You know, there mm-hmm. there's we're talking very fine margins here. So um, you know, long story short, my I guess my prediction would be that we're going to see rates stay pretty consistent. Uh, maybe a small uptick as we go over through the months, but. Um, you know, if, if you're sitting around waiting for rates to decrease, you know, anyone who says I'm going to stay out and wait till rates get lower, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with we're that. in a great place right now, better right. than we ever could have expected and better than a lot of people thought. And I think we're going to continue to see that with possibly, you know, a small, a small range of, of a slight uptick. Okay. So, and, and I mean, that, that is pretty accurate. I think you had a really good point that people weren't that wrong. It's just anytime the rates like move a little bit, then they're like, oh, you're wrong. You, yeah. you didn't get it right. And the Delta variant is something that's, you know, kind of, kind of moving things a little, a little differently here. So I, I do agree with you there as well. I think it's just put some fear in the economy more than mm-hmm. anything else. Mm-hmm. So that's a really great answer. Um, and in line with kind of what everyone thought was going to happen. So, uh, you know, no, knowing that's the case, I mean, in, in terms of, some of these, uh, I want to get your take on a couple of these changes that happened. One is the elimination of the of the refinance fee. So yes. do you want to share what that means for people that are thinking about refinancing, especially because rates kind of came down a little bit again. And, mm-hmm. you know, who should be who should be refinancing in general? Because I think a lot of people think I, I know a lot of people think that once rates go down like a little bit, they should just lock in a new rate. And that's not really the case. Not always. Um, so the the adverse market fee is what is what just got lifted. Um, long story short, at in 2020, at some point when refinance market was very, very hot, um, you know, there's there's many different philosophies of why this was put in place. But the GSEs, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, they put in a, a 50 basis point additional fee on the back end pricing of of banks that are that are providing loans, and that fee eventually kind of trickled down to consumer pricing. So back in 2020, refinance rates took a slight hit. Um, the since then, recently, refinance uh, that market has cooled off pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. And I guess they felt that it was time to remove that fee. So, you know, the big misconception is that that's why purchase interest rates dropped. It really had nothing to do with purchases. That's something totally separate. But but refinance rates did, you know, balance out and come down a little bit lower. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great time to refinance. I think that a refinance conversation is very hypersensitive to an individual's situation. How long are you planning to be at that house? What's your intentions for that house? you know, is it actually the right time to to list and buy a new one while while rates are here? So, Got it. Um, you know, I don't think that there's one perfect answer to it, but uh, either way, you know, just the timing of it, purchase prices, purchase rates dropped, refinance rates dropped. We're right back in the great market that we were in in 2020. So, so what's, what's your general rule of thumb? I mean, cause I, I think a lot of people, they, they might've been maybe, you know, they, lost their job and they're now mm-hmm. getting employed again and they were able to keep their mortgage going or maybe they're coming out of a forbearance program. Um, what's the general rule of thumb for, for a refinance? Because I think people get lost in, I want the lowest payment and they don't think mm-hmm. about, well, I'm eight years into the loan and I'm paying off a lot of principal now or there, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's other factors or here. Or the costs. I mean, you yes. know, a lot of banks will tout uh, cost-free refinances, closing cost-free and that they really don't fully exist. We got, we have a whole nother hour conversation <laughs> about that. But we've um, only got nine minutes. Yeah, so. <laughs> but the, so there is a break even point, and and it usually it depends on the timeline that you plan to be in the house. And I would say, depending on people's goals, the one to three year mark seems to be a really good buffer. If got you're going to be in that house for that period of time, that's where you know any costs that go into the transaction can get counterbalanced by the dip in the interest rate. So one to th- one, one to three years. I mean, I, I think that that's really important. So. Uh, any and now I know you guys are the number one PHFA lender yes. in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about this before, but maybe explain that again, and then any programs that your bank is offering that others can't, because I know there's a big difference between like the big box corporate company versus mm-hmm. a local lender who knows what they're doing. And I'll stress the last part again very clearly that <laughs> knows you. what they're doing and yeah. can be there with you through the transaction. Yeah. So PHFA is the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. Um, most states have one. It's their their pseudo government programs put in place specifically to help buyers purchase homes. And yeah, you have to be an approved lender to work with them. Um, most of the larger banks, uh, you know, I shouldn't say that, but many of the larger banks are not approved to, to do their loans. But PHFA has been their number one guy, or I'm sorry, Mortgage America, we've been their number one guy 
um, for I think for the past five years. So um, they're very much geared towards first time buyers, but not always. You know, we have some some second and repeat purchase programs as well through PHFA. The the number one program that we're using through them right now, and this is the one that just came out in March. I think you did a segment on it before. It's called the KFIT loan. Yep. Um, and this is a huge, a huge um, deal in the Pennsylvania mortgage industry right now because it allows buyers to get up to 5% of the purchase price in a second loan to help pay for their closing costs. Um, so that can be a giant number, a $300,000 house. You know, that's 15 grand that, that comes off of the top when you're, when you're buying a house. So that can be the difference between people getting a house and not. Um, so it's a zero interest second loan. It requires no monthly payback. It's actually forgiven at 10% each year as the, as they own the home. So if you own the home for 10 years, it, it goes away completely. So that's the biggest thing to hit, not only PHFA, but Pennsylvania, um, in this past year. And it really comes at a great time when people's savings might be low, you know, people had some job issues. So, uh, that's, that's, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that all day if you want. <laughs> well, and, and I, you know, what we talked about earlier, and Stacey, I'd love you to chime in here. Now that the market is less incredible than it was three months ago, and I, I, I mean that intentionally because we're still seeing some incredible things happen. It's just not that super competitive situation. I mean, you see, do you see that as a more a higher likelihood of being able to put a deal like that together? Because, sure. you know, face it, earlier in the year, I mean, if you had FHA or VA financing, you weren't a lot or something like this that wasn't right. just your normal conventional with a lot of cash down. Out of the box a little right. bit. Sellers yeah, were weren't weren't really looking at those offers. So now that we're in August and we talked about that there the market is calming down, I think is the right word. Not slowing down, but calming down. Do you, do you I mean, do you see that as a viable option for buyers? I totally see that as a viable option. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and especially with uh some it, when the inventory ticks up a little bit, yep. I think there's going to be incredible opportunity for those first time home buyers mm -hmm. with FHA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that anyone listening right now, I mean, this, I can't stress this enough. I mean, this is something you should be talking to your lender about and your agent about. And if they don't know what they're talking about, press them or find somebody else. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to mince words there because this could be the difference between someone buying a home and not buying a home or Absolutely. paying someone else's mortgage versus paying their own mortgage, right? right. A lot of folks think that they, can't that they won't qualify mm -hmm. for a mortgage and i always tell them how do you know like who told you that right you get that yeah. information <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean and they don't know they just automatically assume that they can't so. yeah and money in the bank is a big factor in that you know mm -hmm. no one thinks that they have enough savings to do it and this is a program that that can really help with that absolutely i think yeah. it's a great program mm -hmm. very cool um so with that program is there any is there like a catch there or anything odd that people should be aware of i mean i, I know the answer but Usually when things sound like they're too good to be true, people start to question them. Agreed. And and we've looked for holes in this. Uh, surprisingly, very little catches. Like we said, zero interest, zero monthly payback. Um, you know, the program itself in, in most counties in Pennsylvania is first time buyer specific. Got it. Uh, Philadelphia County, it's not. So you can use it as a repeat buyer. There's, in, there's income limits depending which county you're buying in and your household size. There's uh, credit requirements. But uh, aside of that, there's you know there's no rate increases. There's no there's really no catch behind the scenes to where it gets more expensive. It's just a matter of making sure that that you as a buyer fit into that, and that's where you know getting with the right real estate agent, getting with the right mm -hmm. lender, you know, will help you sift through that and find out if something like this works for you. Awesome. I mean, and this is just you know, it's, it's I, I look at this as our obligation to get the word out about this. I mean, have you seen a lot of people take advantage of this program? And yes, very very okay, many. good. And okay. so especially people that were on the sidelines that that knew that they were, you know, saving as much as they could, but that's a very hard thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this pulled people off the bench and, and got them into homes. Well, and then you think about that. I mean, there's a lot of equity at stake here for buyers right now, just given the predictions and and, and the projections of the market that you, you wait to, to buy. I mean, you could be looking at a, a lesser net, uh, net worth. Mm -hmm. Your payment's going to be higher based on what we talked about at the mm -hmm. beginning of the segment. So, yeah. you know, if you're on the fence, I mean, I, I, you know, just, just find someone who knows what they're talking about. I don't care who you call, just get someone that's competent and, if they're not giving you this right information, I mean, that, that's where you got to go look for a, a lender like Mortgage America that understands what, what, what's going on. So we've got like three minutes left here. Someone comes to you, Kyle, and they say, hey, I'm thinking about buying before the end of the year, but I don't really know what to do. Or I'm thinking about waiting or I just need some advice. What are you talking? What are you, what are you saying to that consumer? And I mean, you can certainly chime in too, Stace, but I want to hear from the financing end because <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think people talk about this enough. I mean, it's always like, oh, why wait? Prices are going up or, right. and, and we know what, what the market's going to do, but what, what are you telling people right now? Cause you're having, you're in this conversation every day. Get the pre-approval done. 
Get yes. the pre-approval done now. <laughs> um, it's, it, you know, there's a lot of misconception around pre-approvals and about how that process works, how much it costs, how long it lasts. Um, and uh, different lenders will have different answers. But a pre-approval is really just a, a lender collecting. It's kind of the first pass at your information and your purchasing scenario. So it's only as good as the information that's in it. Uh, we personally don't really have expiration dates on mm -hmm. our pre-approvals. We just make sure we keep in touch with you and update that information as we go. So you know whether you're buying next month, whether you're buying by the end of the year, whether you're buying next year, the the number one thing that I can say is get with a lender, get a pre-approval. It's going to make things more tangible for you. It's going to make sure you're looking in the right price range, that you're not wasting your time and a real estate agent's time. Um, it's going to make sure you don't have any blemishes on your credit uh, that might need to be taken care of. It's really just going to make the whole thing, it's going to put it at your feet. And then you can build your timeline from there. If it's not until six months, that's fine. We put it on the back burner, we circle back. Um, so that I, I couldn't stress that enough is get the pre-approval out of the way. Make sure Two minutes. you're ready to buy in six months. And, uh, and then we can take you from there. What about the, the the consumer that says, I don't want to get my credit pulled because it's going to drop my credit score? You got to hear this all the time. We hear it all the time. I mean, look, credit inquiries do have the ability to impact credit scores. It's on a very minute scale. You know, it's not like you're shopping in for 17 different car loans in one shot. It's one inquiry. Um, by the time that report expires, which could be four to six months, any blip that was on that initial inquiry, it's it's water under the bridge. And what that got you in terms of your preparation to be in the housing market, it, it's it's priceless in comparison. So um, I, it's it's a good question, but I don't think it should stop people from applying. I, I could not agree with this advice more because sometimes, I mean, you know, there, there's people that have the same names as their parents, right? Mm -hmm. And then a loan pops up that would happen when you were five years old. And obviously it's not you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and when you're making these big financial decisions, sometimes you don't know what the issues are going to be because, the, you know, the, the lending guidelines change a little bit from mm -hmm. time to time, right? I mean, would you say they're loosening or, or tightening right now or just to see you kind of, and, and like, where, where do people get hung up, especially if they're like 1099 or they have investment properties? I mean, there's all these variables, right? So I, I think this is yeah. just something to, to think about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's plenty of variables that go into it. I mean, self-employment's a hot button right now. Um, so, you know, that's what a, a loan officer does, right? That's That's our job to sift through it and see which guidelines will impact you and which ones won't. And that's, you got to look to know is what I always circle back to. The more you know, just like the NBC segment, right? So <laughs> Kyle, my friend, thank you for coming on. Really great stuff. How thank do people get in touch with you if they, if they need to reach out? Uh, call, email, text. Uh, I don't know if you want to give them my information or I give them my information. Uh, go, go for it. They're, they're listening on the radio. So uh, I, I call, can't Call, email, it. text. <laughs> my email address is Kyle, K-Y-L-E at mymortgageamerica.com. Or you can visit mymortgageamerica.com and fill out our online application. Very cool. I'm glad you didn't give out your cell phone number. That was probably a it. smart move. So, <laughs> all right. So you know how to get in touch with Kyle. Um, if you want to follow Stacy on Instagram, she is the number two Mitchco M I T C H C O. You can follow me at Tom Tool Three R D. Um, you can visit the live stream on Facebook or YouTube. Just search Tom Tool Sales Group. Email the show info at tooltimeradio.com. Especially if you got a question, a topic, or you want to reach out to us. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio. We're signing off for this week on WWDB 860 AM.